Hang me a light or something. Okay. So, this poor chap has been sitting neglected here on the concrete pad after all of the rigmarole to get it here and get it running. For two reasons. First off, it electrocuted me. I still need to figure that out. But, uh, the main reason... I can't really convey that while I'm holding the camera because the camera shakes, but yeah, this table's got about 16th eighth of an inch of backlash in it, which is way too much to do any decent work. And I did some investigating just now, and looks like the way this works, pretty typical. You got your, that's our lead screw nut. And it's got two dogs on it, and there, to, I presume, to twist it in and out. I presume it's threaded into that pillow block to adjust backlash. But, I'm looking up there, and I see a third bolt, which I suspect, I don't know, but I suspect, locks that in place. And I can't get to that bolt. So I think this table may have to come off. I really don't want to. Well, I tried making a quick and dirty tool, but yeah, that, that ring under there is being held by something and I can't get a wrench to it. Not enough room, so yeah, this table's coming off. Fortunately, they didn't go Gorilla Nuggets on these giant screws. So... I shouldn't need to get out the impact screwdriver, which is a cursed-ass tool that I hate to get these things out. Okay, ready or not, here we go. Now, um, I should support that. Always keep dunnage blocks around. Yeah, no, I couldn't have uh, done that even if I could have gotten a gotten a wrench on it, <laughs> cause it's a screwdriver. I'd have needed to make a custom tool or something. All right. Okay, so loosen this up. This doesn't want to turn. I'm not going to go to fucking town on it, cause. Well, that's just not good. But I'm looking at this. That might push. Because if you look, it lines up just barely with this bore. That may push on it and twist it in. I'm not quite sure. Hmm. Huh. This thing loosened up. Huh? Okay, it's time to get the manual, because uh, this is not what I expected. Yeah, I guess I just wasn't careful enough last time, because I couldn't find this drawing. Because that is very different from what I've got. Like, I took that table off. It don't look like that. Hmm, so, instructions were not very useful. So, this does not actually have any backlash adjustment that I can tell. I've got a lead screw nut. And I can't really show that to you real well. There we go. Got all that play in it. And that is one chunk of chunk of cast iron. The only other thing that this lead screw goes through is the uh, auto feed mechanism. And there is nothing, as far as I can tell, that actually allows me to take up this slot. So, yeah, this is, uh, is going to be a task. 
Well, we got part numbers. I guess we can take a chance, see if people still make parts for a machine over a century old. Okay, no dice, but just had a bad idea, which if it doesn't end up working, will still leave me in about the same place. I'm going to take all my measurements off of this thing. And what I can do is saw this in half right down here. And that'll leave a little bit of adjustment right in here so that then I can drill and fix this half because this half already has retaining stuff on it but cut this off so it's fixed right here by a screw and some threads and then this one will be done by a screw and some threads and the cutting kerf should give me the adjustability I need so I think I'm gonna give that a try it's a long shot but it might work, and if I've got all of my dimensions off of this and I need to make a new one of these, I can do that. Okay, quick material check, just in case I have to order a new one of these. Yep, we're magnetic, but generally you wouldn't make something like this out of steel. So let's spark test. Yeah, I can barely see those sparks. Cast iron. So, yeah. Cast iron lead screw nut. No surprises. Just had to check. Alright. So, got some dimensions here. I'm going to CAD this up at some point here. Uh, put it up somewhere where y'all can get it. Probably up on my GitHub, honestly. And, uh, yeah. Lead screw is one and a half by four tooth per inch Acme thread. The outside thread on this is basically two and three eighths uh, by 10 TPI. So, and everything else is just basic cylindrical dimensions. Uh, this is two and a quarter inch. Everything else is kind of unique. Um, yeah. And the only other feature, which I didn't really show well, is it has these face drive dogs for actually screwing it in. And they're three-eighths of an inch wide. Put them on here, but I can't really describe that because that's a... I don't have a good way to measure that radius. It looks like they just used a radius cutter like a woodruff key cutter, like a giant one. And then we have four oil holes. That's where the oil line uh, goes in here and actually gets to the lead screw. So, yep. Hmm. Shopping list. I don't have any part any parting off inserts for this tool holder. I thought I did, but I don't. So I'm going to have to cut a groove with a straight triangle insert right in the middle, cut it down till it's thin enough that this grooving insert right here, which if you look is a little narrower, can only cut about an eighth of an inch deep. But until that, we'll actually part this thing off. <sighs> Poop. Yeah, gotta slum it, because I ain't got a parting tool that'll cut deep enough. Oh, and by the way, if you're going to do a hand sawing operation like this, um, resist the temptation to turn on the lathe and run it against the saw. Um, you can get away with that with a file, but a hacksaw? Um, no, this thing will yeet the entire thing straight into your face. Ask me how I know. All right. So, you probably need both hands. I'm making some little Brad Point uh, set screws that are going to go in to that block to hold these 
halves. So basically what this is going to be, I'm going to put this all the way in. And I am going to dimple it to line up with the hole that I'm drilling there. And the other half of this is going to have a dimple put in the existing hole to line it up. So I can adjust, uh, basically just adjust. Well, this one will go in so that it, the other one can be punched right in the correct position, spot drilled, and then run another one of these in there to hold it at the correct orientation because the threads are what are going to actually hold these in place. All that needs to do is to keep it from spinning, and I just want a little bit more than just the tip of that in order to hold that in place. So we'll see how that works. Okay, so the tr so the tricky part of this operation is going to be I have these two separate pieces of this nut that I've split. And I'm going to need to figure out how to thread them in there at the same time because they thread on this, but they also thread into this block and they don't do so at the same pitch. So what I think I'm going to try to do, I'm going to put calipers on it get it to the same length that it was when I started and then just basically put it in by turning the screw and both of them at the same time hopefully we'll see how that works All right. here we go crank that down All right there we go All right in again all right so we still have good rotation yeah probably should have tried this before yeah I probably should have tried this before but got good rotation Not a lick of backlash. Awesome. And we'll see how long it lasts. If it wears out in a, in a month, I'll know that I just need to get a new one. All right. Nothing. All right. Warm this thing up. Let's see what we want. There. Let that warm up a bit, and then I can turn up that spindle speed. This thing doesn't like, uh, Going from a cold start to 1500 RPM. It's a little big for that. All right, let's. All right, let's try about 900. this time. Mm, gummy, gummy, gummy. Alright, let's stick with that feed rate, shall we? I'm taking it easy. Easy. 
Easy peasy. Well, I can't feel that. So I guess this is fairly close to being in tram. Though I'd hate to have to just tram on this. Just throwing that out there. Uh, yeah. Woo. <laughs> yeah, it's not bad. Could probably go harder, but don't know that I need to. And what might you might find funny is a lot of this is getting ready to make computer parts. Yeah, who'd have thunk it? So, stay tuned for that. And thank you all once again, as always, for checking out what I'm working on today. All right.